One year ago, I began my journey to one day become a certified anesthesiologist assistant. However, getting to this point was not easy, and there's a ton of vital information that I wish I knew before hitting that submit button on CASA. Many AA programs have already opened their applications, including Colorado, Case Western, and Indiana, with many more on the way. And odds are you might be getting ready to start your own application very soon. Today, I wanted to share with you 10 tips I wish I knew before applying to anesthesiologist assistant school. But before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video that I put out and also hit that like button it really does help out small channels like this one so without further ado let's get started number one submit your application early but there's a catch just like medical school admissions AA programs will evaluate applications on a rolling basis this means that prospective students who submit their application early in the cycle will have their application viewed first compared to someone who submits their application later in the cycle or even near the deadline. This is important because by submitting your application early, you are maximizing your chances of receiving an interview. When you submit your application early, there are more spots for interviews available later in the cycle. By submitting your application near the deadline, you might even risk not being reviewed by adcoms if the cohort is already filled. Submitting early can give you a significant advantage compared to the rest of the application pool. However, this leads us to number two, which is don't click submit if you have an incomplete application. This can be an absolute killer for some applicants. Some students can overemphasize tip number one and submit their application prematurely, even if they are falling short in vital areas of the application. For example, if you submit your application having not completed your shadowing hours, missing prerequisite courses, or even having a poor MCAT or GRE score, you risk your application being tossed without a second glance. In this situation, submitting your application early will do you no good, and sometimes the best strategy is to be patient and take that extra year to bolster your application and put your best foot forward to admissions committees. Your future self will thank you. Number three is cast a wide net. One of the scariest things I have seen some applicants do is only apply to a single program on CASA. Now don't get me wrong, there are absolutely some instances where this is acceptable. Financial, geographical, and family factors all play a role in many schools prospective students apply to. However, for the vast majority of applicants, it is most advantageous to apply to as many programs as possible. When I applied, my philosophy was that I would rather get into any program than get into no programs. Maximize your chances of getting that precious acceptance by applying to every school that you can. You never know which program you might fall in love with. Number four is do your research. Each program is incredibly different from the application timeline to the prerequisite courses to the interview. By taking the time to understand each program individually, you can increase your chances of gaining interviews and acceptances. In my case, I was not able to apply to certain programs such as Emory and Case Western because I was missing my general biology prerequisite. It would have been a waste of time and money applying to these programs, but because I did my research, I was able to be efficient during the application cycle. Some helpful resources you can use to organize information on every program include CASA, Anesthesia One Source, and this video right here. Number five, let your personal statement simmer a little bit. The personal statement is the cornerstone of your application, and since it is so important, it is in your best interest to take your time in writing it. Do not expect to whip it out in a single afternoon. Do some deep self-reflection on why you want to become a CAA. Maybe keep a journal with you for a couple months and really think about why you are pursuing this profession. Tell your story and show how you fell in love with anesthesia. Don't just list your achievements and sound like a robot. Over time, your personal statement will come to fruition, and when it does, be sure to have it peer reviewed. Nothing turns an adcom away from your entire application other than an avoidable spelling error. For more on the personal statement, go check out this video here. Number six, don't neglect the short essays. Although these are only 600 characters in length, the short essays can be a great way to further show your personality to adcoms. I might go against the grain here, but many students list facts and descriptions for their experiences. I took the route that Dr. Gray and many other pre-healthcare advisors recommend tell a story. In my short essays, I did my best to fluidly include different stories from each experience and how it shaped me into the person that I am today. This gave me a ton of material to talk about during my interview and allowed me to connect with the adcoms that were evaluating my application. Don't brush off the short essays, they can give you a significant edge in the application cycle. Number seven, choose your letters of recommendation very carefully. A common mistake I see pre-AA students make is choosing their letters of recommendation based on the status of the letter writer, rather than how well that individual knows them as a person. For example, I had to decide if I should submit a letter of recommendation from a doctor who I shadowed versus from my collegiate track coach. I'd only known the doctor for less than a year, and I knew that I had not had enough time with this doctor for them to be able to attest to my character. My coach, on the other hand, was ecstatic to write me a letter, and we had been through many ups and downs together where I was confident he knew me better than just about anybody. Letters of recommendation from healthcare professionals are essential to your application, but ensure that the people writing your letters 
can attest to your academic ability, your interpersonal skills, and most importantly, your character. Number eight, practice, practice, practice. Interview day is most likely not something you can improvise the day of. Without proper knowledge of common interview questions and practice speaking to someone in a mock interview setting, you risk being unprepared for the last hurdle standing in the way of becoming an anesthesiologist assistant. Find a buddy to help you practice and look up some common medical school or PA school interview questions to go over before interview day. A great place to find common interview questions and fellow prospective students to practice with is the CAA Discord. Number nine, know each program inside and out. One of the most overlooked aspects of preparing for your interview is knowing the specifics about the program that you're interviewing at. A common interview question you might run into is why this program? Many students enter the interview with stock answers that you could apply to any program, but you can set yourself apart by mentioning something specific to that program. Reach out to a current student at that school or scour the program's website to find something that will really leave an impression on your interviewer. Okay, a couple honorable mentions before our last tip here. Honorable mention number one is dress to impress. I have unfortunately seen students dress far too casually on interview day, and this will certainly set you apart from the rest but not in a good way. Dress professionally and save yourself from being the odd one out. Honorable mention number two, follow up after the interview. This was something I didn't realize until interview season, but send a short thank you email to your interviewers. This courteous gesture can go a long ways and leave a lasting impression. Keep it classy, but warm. And finally, number 10, be confident. There are prospective students every year who walk into their interview full of fear and anxiety. And I get it, I had to walk into my interview day just like all of you will. It's stressful and it's scary, However, a sentiment I hear from admissions committees again and again is that if you are sitting there on interview day, you belong there. You are being interviewed because the people reviewing your application think you have what it takes to become an anesthesiologist assistant. You have the stats on paper, you have the experience, and they simply want to get to know you as a person to see how you will fit into the rest of the cohort. When I realized that, a huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders. I could relax, I could speak confidently, and most importantly, I could be myself. When you walk in on interview day, remember that you belong there. Everyone believes in you. Now go out there, put your best foot forward in interview day so that you can one day achieve your dream of becoming an anesthesiologist assistant. These are 10 tips I wish I knew before applying to anesthesiologist assistant school. If you want to know more about how I was able to get into my top choice program, go check out this video right here. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.